Welcome to The Future Is, a podcast where we meet the people shaping what's next in business and life. I'm your host, Laura Kelleher, Honeywell's Chief Marketing Officer. And in today's episode, we're going to break down the topic of emissions management, something that's been a complex undertaking for industrial companies, but is being transformed by technology. I'm joined today by Deanna Haynes, a senior director focused on industrial decarbonization at Honeywell, to discuss the ins and outs of emissions management and how innovative technologies can help companies wherever they are in their journey to sustainability. To start, can you walk us through why emissions management historically has been such a difficult process for industrial companies? What are some of their main challenges? What we're talking about are greenhouse gases, which are the gases that help trap heat in are, are contributing to global warming. In particular, um, carbon dioxide is the main gas that typically people talk about, but what we're, we're focusing on in our solutions are not only all the greenhouse gases and helping manage them, but specifically what is called methane, which is methane is a gas that's in natural gas, which is a fuel that most of our industrial customers use. And methane is in other, um, occurs naturally in the environment. and it is something that um, has a strong global warming potential compared to carbon dioxide. If we can reduce it now in the near future, it can really help stem the global warming that's going on. So we have some really good solutions around that. And the pain points traditionally around methane and, and measuring methane has been that they, it's very difficult to measure, especially if it's coming from a fugitive source and it's very difficult to differentiate it where it's coming from, pinpoint where its location is, things like that. Um, also, the other pain point with greenhouse gas emissions and it's just generally getting the data and, and getting it from the source into a system that can help you do any kind of voluntary or mandate, mandatory disclosures in an efficient way that makes so that there's good integrity with that data through the through the process. There's a lot of handoffs and that data um, is very difficult sometimes to get, and it's very difficult to make sure it's quality assured. And we help automate that that collection of data. So those are the key pain points, helping really measure um, the, the gas and actually efficiently collecting the gas from, uh, from the emitting sources. Once a company is able to generate data about its emissions with the help of hardware solutions, what happens next? How does software play that pivotal role? So the software um, is really important in terms of helping aggregate the emissions across the facility, helping do quality assurance around those emissions. Um, one of the things that um, also it does is help differentiate what type of emission is it? Is it coming from a venting that's happening on a pneumatic piece of equipment? Or is it coming from a passive fugitive component? Or is it coming from the process itself? Um, we provide, instead of a snapshot or photo of what's happening, we provide the movie, the entire picture. So you could go back in time, look at trends, see where things may be happening, and understand from a root cause analysis what could be causing those emissions so that you can prevent them from reoccurring in the future. That is really transformational to have that kind of data and to have that real-time access to it. Um, so what excites you most about emissions management solutions that Honeywell brings to market? We have a footprint throughout the globe so that we could service um, any of our products. Our emissions are happening throughout the world, so we need to have that global reach. The other aspect of it is that our solutions are integrated. Everything is tied together. It has a, a common uni uniform interface. Um, graphical uniform interface so that folks aren't having to learn different applications or having to have that learning curve around how to navigate through those applications. And the data can be stored in one system of record in the background so that you don't have to be searching throughout um, different applications for the data. It can all be pulled into one uniform, harmonizing digital backbone framework that can be tied to um, work management tools, it can be tied to your SAP systems, things like that, and all that can be pulled in to help you manage emissions. We also have 
all the levers to help you decarbonize. You know, Honeywell um, wants to be your one-stop shop partner for all your decarbonization solutions. We have all the key levers that a company needs to help them decarbonize. We have not only the ability to help you manage the emissions, help you account for those emissions, do your voluntary and mandatory disclosures on those emissions, help you show the reductions over time, help you meet those KPIs, key performance indicators. But we also have tools to help you manage the equipment and processes so that they're more energy efficient, that they're operating at their optimum, and that will reduce your emissions. We have energy transi transition uh, technologies around hydrogen, carbon capture tools. Uh, so we have all these major levers for heavy industry to basically decarbonize. And we have all the technologies, all the subject matter experts to help we help you with that decarbonization journey over time. How do you see the industrial emissions management evolving in the next five to 10 years? So emissions management is going to evolve over the next five to 10 years, really being driven a lot by policies and incentives that are happening throughout the world. For example, here in the United States, we have the Inflation Reduction Act, which um, has some key components. It has some carrots and sticks uh, for companies to, to utilize. It has um, I'll talk about the carrots first and then the sticks later. But the carrots, there's a lot of tax incentives around um, carbon capture, for example, or creating hydrogen and production tax credits and um, uh, carbon capture tax credits that are really lucrative. And it's like helps you basically lower that cost to do that energy transition. So that's going to be in full force over the next five to 10 years. And then the European market, if you are selling products to the European market, they're, they're putting together what's called a carbon border adjustment mechanism. And your products need to have some type of, um, you know, understanding of what the carbon, the, the carbon intensity of those products are going into that European market. The six products that they're covering right now with that carbon tax are aluminum, uh, fertilizer, electricity, hydrogen. Those are, and there's a couple more, but it's, the key theme behind those products that are going to be taxed is that natural gas is the number one feedstock to make those products. And so having a real good handle on your carbon intensity is going to be really important to help meet those markets. So, so some of the sticks are in the, under the Inflation Reduction Act, there's what's called a waste emission charge for, for those that are in the uh, methane value chain, um, the oil and gas value chain mainly where if you exceed a certain threshold um, in your facility's emissions, so much emissions per you know, product production, uh, per production or per throughput of uh, natural gas through your system, um, you'll be subject to a charge, which could be very, very significant. It could start, it's starting at $900 per metric ton above the threshold up to um, over $1,500 in 2026. So, there's some potential sticks that could really be significant. And uh, so it's going to be really important to, to get a handle on your, your methane intensity. Thank you, Deanna. Um, before we close, you know, our podcast focuses on the future, but we always like to ask each of our guests to look back. When you were younger, what did you want to do when you grew up? I wanted to be a professional fisherwoman. <laughs> I loved fishing. I grew up in the Pacific Northwest, uh, trout fishing on rivers and camping in the evergreen forests of Washington State. And I just love fishing. And so I, I wanted to be a professional fisherwoman. And, uh, you know, that's something I probably will aspire to uh, uh, as I get into uh, retirement. So that's great. Perfect. Um, thank you so much again for joining us today.